It is repetition which makes for perfection. And Kira, um, I'm going to ink on this, right? So you can see the lines. But there are other things I... A, I didn't realize like all the double entendres and, and sort of adult bits of uh, kind of um, language in there. I thought it held up pretty good. Um, the costume itself, I've seen better versions of the bat suit now at Comic-Con. So, you know, what was really cutting edge back then is, uh, you know, it's uh, middle of the road quality these days, right? Um, I don't know if I've ever seen the Batmobile kind of respond to voice commands before. And that's something that we incorporated, I think, into Hush. And I think it came from that movie, I want to say. Fantastic. He, he's hilarious. And then that line, or so in theater, uh, and, you know, I was a comic book professional at that point. I think. How does that look? Okay, great. And the bat wing was awesome. But even then, I was uh, watching this going like, think of the production budget. I mean, obviously, in 1989 dollars or $88. And uh, just really the love and care that it went to each shot and the art deco. Uh, everything was kind of bespoke looking and uh, a nod, I'm sure, to other sort of classic movies that Tim Burton loved. But it was just uh, beautiful. And uh, Jack Palance is awesome. And of course, Jack Nicholson. Much scarier than I imagine or remember. Again, I was watching with my kids and they were not handling <laughs> the Joker scenes that well. But they didn't have nightmares. They didn't wake up in the middle of the night. So that was good. So I don't know when we're going to revisit that. My other older kids, I remember kind of hiding behind the couch as we would watch it. But I think they were a little bit older. We're going to go see Toy Story today, so we'll make up for it. Like It's not all about subjecting them to... Dad's movies from yesteryear. But for sure, um, the production values are amazing. He did some stuff with Olds to achieve certain effects before they are readily available. Then even the, the Batmobile kind of locking up very for, like early days of CGI. But it looked good. Held up. Transfer was pretty clean. Someone was saying that the sound effects of the were completely redone. I don't know anything about that. They didn't. I didn't notice anything odd about that. I was watching on a pretty big screen. I, I was not flexing uh, steak and cheese. I was merely stating that. So, um, those of you that are really into resolution and that kind of audio, audio files or cinematic files or whatever I'm talking about, audio visual files, uh, it, it, it came through. I'll tell you that uh, at this point, on the cloud, we buy through um, Apple for the most part. Um, but any of the big action movies, I still go and buy the 4K discs. I have a 4K player. And because um, uh, I think it, it, the blacks, the shadows look uh, better. And I think just the amount of digital information is more. I think when you stream it, it, it gets either compressed or dialed down a bit. I don't know. I think I compared a streaming episode of Game of Thrones to an episode I had on 4K, like a disc. And I did notice a difference. I did a little video on the backpack, but I'm going to 
do one where I put like the, the phone like on a couch and then I'll just step back to see all the details. I'm pretty proud of it. You know what I like to do sometimes? Well, actually, I don't do this, but uh, when I was younger, I would draw like the face underneath the mask just to see if it worked. All right? Like, so if there was a nose here. All right? That's where the nose would be, all right? All right, I'm going to put Kate's friend to the test. I'm going to add some shadows. Anyway, I'm here this uh, Sunday, and I'm in streaming as well next weekend, and I do have a cover I have to do, so that might happen. I always say that I'm going to do this, but I do have to do this cover by the 28th, so an evening stream is very likely, and I might even actually start it today. Just the angle of the, and I'm gonna move this eye over a little bit too. First day of summer, was that yesterday? Yeah, so it's pretty exciting, man. Deal with that. Now the eyes are going like that, the nose is going like this, the mouth is at a funny angle, and then the chin has to change. It's actually a little tricky getting all the, uh... that's why I like, even though I've drawn this three quarter shot of Batman, Many, 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 many times. Uh, sometimes they go, it turns out different each and every time. And uh, so I'm often surprised, both pleasantly and unpleasantly, by the final result. Right. I think in future streams, though, I'm going to, aside from... The uh, the critique panels, which I'll start up again. Um, I would like to start return to kind of drawing some some characters I normally wouldn't draw. Use the like typically manga. Anime characters. That was kind of a fun period. Of time but there are still some covers that are coming up that I gotta take care of there's still something funny about this nose mouth combo I'm gonna have to I'm happy with the eyes I see what I want to do I think this is so doing something weird to this wood, it's kind of turning this dark brown. Okay, that's that's good. I 
you know what? All right, this is what I'm going to do for this guy. I'm assuming it's a guy. It might be a gal. I don't know. I'm going to... Cast some shadows. Let's see what he can do. I will give some verbal instructions if you could pass along Kate. When he gets down to this area, if it's easier for him, he can make this all black. trying to create something that feels a little more um, graphical so when you see it from a distance it's almost like uh, the bat symbol itself rather than a drawing at least that's the intent we'll see what happens Obviously, San Diego is San Diego. It's, it's going to be this cool sort of uh, Batman's 80th that we're celebrating that Wednesday night of the show. And yeah, Batman's 80th. It's going to play a big role. And then the next show after that, I believe, is uh, not until Toronto. Going to Fan Expo. Canada and Toronto in end of end of um, August. Eric Fisher Art. When's the next torpedo sign? You know, I had dinner with John last night, and uh, we're talking about a lot of things, but uh, nothing is planned. And I think end of October is it? End of October, I think. Uh, I will be at uh, Baltimore Comic Con. So after Toronto. What do I have after Toronto? Um, New York Comic Con, Baltimore Comic Con, and then um, negotiating for finalizing plans for a show um, October. Uh, that's paying your dues. Um, when I go to shows now, it's pretty organized, like to the minute or half hour. You know, they've got to uh, be at a table. I usually am not at a table doing meet and greets or whatever. Um, the only thing I say is like maybe pace yourself a little bit over those course of the three days. Take breaks, walk around. You don't have to be there every minute. Um, just have a schedule like posted at your thing. Like, hey, Jamie is, you know, taking a break. We'll be back at four and just be, you know, fairly reliable on that front and so you know it's not the quantity of time it's the quality of the time so bringing you out maybe there's an obligation to do three but I find that usually on the last day it gets pretty slow um, You know, maybe have a friend or someone mind the table while you're not there so they can answer questions, commission requests, things like that. So yeah, some people have been taking sketches from the stream and uh, putting them online. That was one of the motivating factors, actually, you know, kind of ending the giveaways.
you know, it's their art. They, they paid the sub. They won fair and square. But, same time, I don't have to continue the practice, so I chose not to. But anyway, the uh, giveaways that um, I have the list from Kirihiko, they will start going out. Um, and uh, what I'll do is maybe put out a notice in the member that, for everyone to see that things, like, I'll say, this item has gone out. And so everyone can kind of see that there's some progress. So even if your item didn't go out, you go like, at least they sent something out. So I should be up soon kind of thing. But don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. All those items, like the statues and DVDs, I've, I've pulled them all. They're, they're basically sitting in a closet at, at the office. Just waiting for um, my assistant to kind of pull it, package it. This. There's a fair bit of line work, so here you go. I would tell them like if it looks daunting, rather than trying to cross hatch and do anything like some of these lines, just make them into black shapes, because I think that will always look better than like if you don't understand the cross hatching. I would just blacken it out for the purposes of this collaboration. I think the black shapes uh, from the example you sent me uh, look better than cross cross hatched. All right. to see this pencil on the shiny board the the board is actually pretty reflective so sometimes I'm kind of drawing blind if there was a, a period in in time where people were drawing comic books on wooden boards back in the uh, Renaissance <laughs> I don't know when they would have done it. You can see why it didn't survive. We needed paper to make this happen. I guess they had paper during the Renaissance. I don't know. A little bit of a cast shadow here. Hopefully, Doris will be able to handle that. And then I'm going to put some other kind of random line work here to kind of push this out. Big time. Super nice guy. Uh, 
Let's see if we can get a decent look at it here. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Anyway, all right. 